This is a CNA podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Comic Conversations. I'm your host, Julie Yu. We've all heard the buzzwords, car lights, and the future of mobility as part of the conversation and how to create a greener world. But what does it actually look like in practice? Car sharing is often touted as a solution, but let's be honest: the reality can be less than glamorous. From dusty dashboards, pet fur on the passenger seat, to late fees, it's not always the most attractive option. So, how can we bridge the gap between car ownership and car sharing? And what will it take to make car sharing the more appealing choice for a more sustainable future? To help us answer these questions, we have Calvin Tay, CEO of Blue SG Singapore, the country's first electric car sharing service. So buckle up as we explore the future of mobility. So, Kevin, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Okay, so I have to ask you first: Do you own a car yourself? I do. <laughs> you do. I do. So, how does your own philosophy gel with the business then? Well, I think my philosophy around owning a car is we have a strong responsibility when bringing a car into the equation to be able to make full use of it. Right. I also, you know, as a human being, see it as a comfortable way to move around from point A to point B.、Mm. So, Kelvin, we've heard that car sharing has really taken off in Singapore. How has the take-up rate of car sharing been for Blue SG? Blue SG has been around since 2017, and over the years, we have seen car sharing becoming much more important in the lives of younger people and millennials in particular. And a big percentage of the population now treats car sharing as an essential part of their lives for them to be able to move around comfortably, sometimes from point A to point B. How much has car sharing helped reduce the number of cars in the streets of Singapore? Based on our own data, one car in a HDB estate can serve anything between twenty to twenty-five people. Globally, statistics suggest that a shared car takes away anything from nine cars off the roads to twenty-five cars off the roads. Oh, that's impressive! And I hear that seven to eight percent of Singapore's population is actually using a car sharing platform or service. It's quite high compared to other countries in terms of the user penetration. What do you think is behind the high adoption rates compared to other places? I think it's the understanding that using a shared car gives a person or a family much more financial freedom. If you own a car, you probably spend two times or three times as much every month just trying to meet your mobility needs. If you were to do car sharing, then you spend a third of the cost or half of the cost. So it's a very attractive value proposition. Then on the other end of the spectrum, you could also opt to take a chauffeur-driven ride, like ride-hailing or taxi. And again, with surge pricing during peak hours, the cost can stack up quite tremendously. So car sharing is definitely a more affordable way and a more flexible way to move around. Okay. So, what other value does a car sharing service create for cities, companies, and individual customers? By bringing car sharing into a city, can reduce the city's needs to provide infrastructure for cars. So, just take an example of any city in the world. Let's say they have a million cars.、Mm. If car sharing can take away twenty percent of the cars, they can spend that twenty percent of the infrastructure costs saved to build essential services for the city. They can put it towards helping the poor, creating social services. They don't have to build so many roads or widen the roads all the time. They don't have to build so many tunnels. They don't have to cater for so many parking spaces、mm. where you know vehicles are parked eighty percent of the time and they are not moving. So it's extremely beneficial to a city. And studies suggest that seventy percent of the world is going to be living in urban populations.、Mm. So what this means is that in the same city, it's going to feel much smaller. And in a smaller city, you'll be constrained by resources, by infrastructure. And we think that it is in every city government's interest to promote car sharing, so that they do not have to build so much infrastructure to support cars which are owned.、Mm. And Kelvin, what distinguishes Blue SG from other car sharing platforms is that the access to electric vehicles. Right? How significant is the sustainability effect for your business? The true value of、uh, Blue SG goes beyond being able to provide an electric vehicle. Our current business model of providing a point-to-point, station-based, fully electric service 
is very, very unique. It cannot be found in many parts of the world at scale. Let's say we don't even talk about electric. It is already a very sustainable solution. So today we have a fleet of a thousand vehicles and you can pick up the vehicle from any one of our 1,500 car parks mm -hmm. and return it to any one of the 1,500 car parks. The average trip length is about 35 to 40 minutes. So our users use it to move from one point to another point and they only pay for the number of minutes. And because they only use it to move it from point A to point B, I can then turn the vehicle many times a day by allowing another 10 people to use it. Recently, we hit a record of 21 people oh, wow. using the same car in the same day. And just by doing that, I just took 20 vehicles off the roads. By taking 20 vehicles off the roads, the embodied carbon necessary to build those vehicles is taken off the equation. So even if I were not electric, I'm sustainable. Mm. Now, if I add electric to the equation, that makes it even more interesting because no matter how my cars move, they are not burning any carbon. They are pretty much emission-free. So I only have to take into account the embodied carbon necessary to build the vehicles. And that puts a great responsibility on us to make maximum use of the vehicles. And if I can do that, I have become a very unique and sustainable point A to point B car sharing service. But EVs are still a relatively new technology. How do Blue SG ensure that its EVs are reliable and having enough charging points and infrastructure to support the demand for car sharing services? Right. So one very key ingredient in having a successful car sharing service is the proactiveness and how supportive the government is in terms of promoting car sharing. The government has taken a position to say that by 2040, only clean energy vehicles are allowed on the roads. No internal combustion engines are allowed. They have committed also to build charging infrastructure ahead of demand. So they have already started facilitating this to have 60,000 charging points by 2030 of which 40,000 of them will be public. So by public, they mean uh, HDB estates. And at the end of last year, the Land Transport Authority in Singapore came up with a mega tender to get the private sector to build between anywhere between 12,000 charging points to 21,000 charging points. And how does Blue SG ensure that the batteries of its EVs are disposed of in an environmentally friendly way once they reach the end of their lifespan? Again, the Singapore government has taken care of that problem for us. So there is an act by the National Environment Agency to lay down the rules of disposing of batteries. And this applies to all kinds of batteries, from consumer batteries all the way to vehicle batteries. Mm. So there is an organization that has been appointed under this act to help us to responsibly dispose or recycle those batteries. Hello everyone, my name is Crispina. And I'm Adrian. And we're the hosts of a podcast called Work It. If you've never heard of it, well, it's a good time to tap in. In the last 20 episodes, we've discussed topics like how to negotiate for a salary increase. Or how to get along with younger colleagues who have different values from you, which incidentally is our top performing episode. If work consumes your life and you want some perspective on issues like management, stress, even office romance, then this podcast should be on your list. A new episode drops every Monday. Catch us on the CNA app or wherever you get your podcast. So Kelvin, let's talk about some concerns that people have. Now, you earlier mentioned there are some 20 people using the same vehicle in a day. And that naturally brings up the issue of cleanliness. I mean, we've heard reports of some users finding trash animal fur, and even roaches in car-sharing vehicles. How do you ensure the car comes back in the same state as when it left? So we treat cleanliness very, very seriously in Blue SG. We have a rating system for customers to let us know after they complete the ride on the scale of 1 to 10, what's the cleanliness level of the car. So once we are alerted to any cleanliness-related issues, we would dispatch our technicians to clean the car. How do they take care of those culprits? We do levy fines on users who abuse the car in any way, and that includes cleanliness issues. Are damages, you know, dents and even accidents, are they common? They do happen, I would say. In Blue SG, of course, we buy comprehensive insurance policies to cover the cars. But I think the users do need to understand that by getting into a car in Singapore, they are already under the jurisdiction of the Road Traffic Act in Singapore. Mm. So there is not just a civic responsibility when using the vehicle. They are also legally bound to ensure that they take care of the car, they follow all the traffic rules and do not damage property. So for us, I think 
think it's a constant education process. We acknowledge that many of our users could be driving infrequently and may not be as familiar. Mm. So we have lots of guides and we also educate our users constantly through our social media channels. How do you address those who bring up the issue of high accident excess fees? One user reported paying over $10,000 for their rented Blue SG car and third party claim. Would this put more people off switching to car sharing? What are your thoughts? So we've already heard the users on the excess portion. So we're happy to report that we have brought the excess fees down very significantly to almost half of what it was. But I'd like to highlight one other thing, which is that if a user books a vehicle and it is illegally used by someone else whose name is not our user, that's a different matter altogether. So in those cases, they would not be covered by our insurance plan. Okay, what about the first and last mile troubles? I mean, my colleague Stephen Cha, he did a show not long ago looking into car sharing in Singapore by using the service for about a week. And he found it quite challenging to find the nearest pickup point. So he actually had to take a bus ride to pick up the car. How can car sharing companies address that gap? I can't speak for other car sharing companies, but in our case, because we are committed to bringing a fully electric fleet into the equation, our constraints would come in the form of availability of charging points. But that is a very temporary constraint because there are thousands of charging points coming on stream. So we are in constant conversations with charging point operators to allow us to use a wider variety of charging points and to provide greater convenience and flexibility to our users. Okay. And when you look at the car sharing as a whole in a country like Singapore, where there is efficient public transport, how scalable is the car sharing industry? And how confident are you that there is a future for shared mobility in this country? So another key ingredient for car sharing is to have an efficient public transportation system. We see public transportation and car sharing and even taxi and ride hailing being part of a comprehensive multimodal transportation scheme to serve the citizens in any country. So as an individual, you have options to travel to different places using different means of transportation. So our belief is not for our users to be using the car every day, two times a day, three times a day. No, that's not the point of car sharing. The idea is that out of the five days of the week, they could choose. Mm. They could decide, oh, they want to have some comfort while traveling. Or they could say they want to hang out with a few friends for drinks in the evening. They leave from the office, drive to the drinking place. And after hanging out with their friends, they can then call for a taxi and go home. So the whole idea behind car sharing is the concept of multimodal transportation and the interplay between various mobility modes so that the users can choose. Do they want to be more comfortable? Do they have certain specific needs? Mm. With this, we strongly believe car ownership can go down because most of the time, people decide to buy a car because of one of these few occasions. Maybe once or twice a week, they need to get in a car. And if they don't have any other option, they would definitely buy a car. But now we are providing options to them. Okay, that's great. I mean, there are quite a few other car sharing players in Singapore. How do you stay ahead of the game? And what are some of the Blue SG's plans that might be in the pipeline? We are just getting started in creating an efficient point-to-point transportation for our users. So our challenge today is to provide a car to the users whenever they need them most of the time. This remains to be the biggest challenge we have, and we are fully committed to leveraging AI technology to make this happen. And before I let you go, what would the streets look like in the city where car sharing is consolidated as a main mobility option? Well, the streets will look less crowded, for sure. With less vehicles, traffic would flow more smoothly. And every time you see a vehicle, it should be moving and it would not be sitting in a car park. I love that. (laughs) We've learned a lot about car sharing. It's a potential in Singapore. Thank you very much, Calvin, for driving these efforts to create more sustainable environment. Thank you, Julie. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks to my guest and thanks to all of you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Now do remember to subscribe and like this podcast so you know when a new episode drops. You can find CNA's climate and sustainability coverage online at cna.asia. The team behind this podcast is Joanne Chen, Saya Wen, Jacqueline Chan, and Crispina Robert. And I'm Julie Yu, signing off. <laughs>